Hello, this is Tom Cardenas with California Surveying and Drafting Supply. Today I'm going to be covering using the S6 with Trimble Access. First, we're going to go ahead and create a job by clicking on Jobs and giving ourselves a new job name. In this case, I'm going to call it Topo with today's date. And next, I'm going to check my coordinate system. I want to go ahead and use a scale of factor 1, but if I click on the coordinate system tab, so I can choose scale factor only or select from library which are typically the only two coordinate systems I'd use with a conventional survey the other three I'd typically use with a GPS setup go ahead and choose scale factor only confirm the scale factor on one and next I'll change my units to US survey feet now these units are up to you it really depends on what the job calls for and uh, your preferences. So as you can see I'm changing my units to all match US survey feet and my stationing preferences. Once I'm satisfied with my job properties I'll click accept. Next I want to go ahead and set up my total stations position by clicking on measure I'll choose my survey style in this case it's CS series and I have a few different ways of setting up my total station setup, station setup is using an instrument point and a back site station setup plus is using multiple back sites and adjusting my total station point if I need to and a resection is using or setting up on an unknown point and having at least two control points to reposition the total station from. I'll go and check my electronic level. In this case I have my total station set up on a desk so it's a little hard to keep the instrument balanced. Uh, one thing to note is that when you are set up on a tripod try to have your legs set up at least three feet apart from each other and that way you'll ensure the best performance out of your internal compensator. Go ahead and hit accept once you're satisfied with your level. You can double check your corrections and adjust your temperature. In this case, the S6 has a built in barometer. And all we need to do is adjust the temperature. Finally, I'll go ahead and give myself an instrument point to start up on. In this case, I'm keying in a new point since point 100 doesn't exist. I'll give it a new descriptor or feature code. And when I put my instrument height, I'm going to measure it to the bottom notch on the S6. So I want to make sure that I specify the bottom notch using the smart arrow to the right of the, the height field. And I'll go ahead and choose five and a half feet if I measure it up. Key in a new instrument point and elevation. I'm not going to click on the control point checkbox just because that'd be if it was a known control point that I wanted to hold in the network adjustment and I'll go ahead and hit accept. Next I'm going to set up my back site. I'm going to go and give myself a back site point name and a code describing that back site. A back site height, in this case I'm using my telescopic rod with a prism as my back site. So I'm going to choose a back site height of 8 feet. Give myself an azimuth and if it's a new back site or I want to check an existing back site I want to change my method to angles and distance. So prior to measuring that backside, I want to ensure that I'm using the correct offset with my prism. To do that, simply click on the prism icon, click on the height of the prism, and in this case I'm using a VX or S series 360 prism. It's going to fill in my constant for me automatically, and I'm going to leave active prism tracking off. Go ahead and hit accept and then I'll go ahead and get lined up with my prism. Now if I want the instrument to track the prism and to follow it along I want to ensure that I turn auto lock on by clicking on my prism or my instrument icon tapping on auto lock then I can aim the instrument towards my prism and if I want to with auto lock on I can hit the instrument icon again that little animated prism indicates that auto lock is on. And I can hit search. 
especially helpful when you're pretty far away from the instrument once you set it up and you're shooting a back sight. Once I'm locked on, I'll go ahead and measure that back sight. See, I've got a very close back sight here because I'm set up in my office. I'll go ahead and hit store. And my station setup is complete. Now I am ready to start measuring some tobo points. So again, I'll go to measure. I'll choose measure topo and I'll give myself my first topo point number. Go and give it a description. In this case, I'll choose NG for natural ground. My method is going to stay on angles and distance. And I'll go ahead and start measuring. Now, before I measure this point, you might notice that there is an S next to the instrument icon. This means I'm in standard mode, which is going to take an average of shots for each observation. I go and hit store. I can also change over to track mode, which is going to give me an instantaneous distance as well as an instantaneous observation. It's not going to be as precise, but it's still fairly precise and definitely good enough for basic topo work. With track mode enabled, I can simply point and shoot as quickly as I can move and level up the rod. And again, you can see the T next to my instrument icon and a live distance update as I'm moving around with the rod. If I want to, I can change my target height. I need to move it down. In this case, I'll go to five and a half feet. I'll hit accept. I'll continue measuring points. I'll also go into my map screen by clicking on map. That red line indicates the direction that the instrument's facing. I can click on the pan button to pan around my job. I can also click and hold on the zoom button and draw a box around a group of points that I want to zoom into. I can also go to measure directly from my map screen and continue to measure topo points. I want to go into reflectorless mode, meaning that I'm not going to use a prism to shoot objects. I can simply click on the prism icon and change it to my DR prism or my prismless mode, and I can begin to measure points. If you'll notice, I'm still in track mode, which the T indicates next to my instrument icon meaning that it's going to store points instantaneously as I turn the instrument. The button with the four arrows on my map screen is the zoom extends button and I can always tap and hold on a point and stake it out directly from my map screen. Once I hit accept and I store a point in the stakeout mode it's actually going to store or begin to store a cut sheet with the deltas between my design points and my observed points. Back in the main menu of general survey, I can also go to the stakeout menu and add points to a list if I want to in order to build an organized cut sheet with the points in sequential order by their point name. With a robotic instrument, when you're in auto lock mode, or when you're staking out in general, the instrument's automatically going to turn towards the point that you're staking out. When it comes time to export your jobs, you can always plug a thumb drive into your data collector. It's going to appear as hard disk in your list of files. So in this case, I'm exporting a CSV file. Again, I can go to Jobs, Import Export, Export Fixed Format Files. Choose the file format that I want to export. In this case, I'll choose a DXF. 
Click on the Browse button to ensure that I'm choosing and exporting to my hard disk or the thumb drive and export my data there. You can also key in points very easily by going to key in, choose points, give my point a point name, a code, a northing, easting, and elevation. Store it. And I can quickly and easily stake that point out. Of course, I want to ensure that my station has been set up correctly. Once my instrument turns to that point, I can back out 34 feet, or actually come in 34 feet, stake out that point. So I'm done with my survey, I can click on Measure and my conventional survey. A couple notes on the instrument functions. If you tap on the instrument icon, remember you can toggle between standard, which is an average observation, and track mode, which is an instantaneous observation. I can turn my track light on and off. This is very helpful if I'm far away from the instrument and I want to know which way it's facing. Okay. Turn my laser pointer on and off. DR is for direct reflex or reflectorless mode. I can view how well the instrument has leveled up. I can turn on the joystick and the directions that I turn relative to either the instrument's perspective or the target. I can have the instrument turn to fixed 90s and also say change face, which will flop the instrument onto phase two. Check my corrections again, uh, going into survey basic mode, which is basically using my instrument as a easy little transit type setup and I can also go into search mode so just in case I lose my prism and I get pretty close to getting lined up on it again I can search for it. So this was a very quick and basic video but the beauty of this is that you can watch it over and over again as many times as you'd like to. So I hope this came in handy for the basics of using Trimble Access with the S6 robotic total station. And if you have any questions, always feel free to give us a call at 916-344-0232. Thanks for watching.